G'day guys, welcome back to the Boundary Riders podcast. So we're now at episode 11, and we just finished round 9. A pretty big round this one. We saw Richmond cause an absolute upset against Geelong. Fremantle beating Sydney in Sydney. And it looks like Port Adelaide may be staking some claims for a top 8 position, as well as the Adelaide Crows winning both their games in round 9. But um, we saw most of the games this week, and... I think there's a couple of big changes coming through. I think that a couple of clubs may be missing finals now and a couple of clubs may be pushing for a final spot after a disappointing 2022. Yeah, I think you're starting to see a, a bit of a separation between the clubs that are going to make it and who aren't. And some people, yeah, just the and the really low teams that are just going to get beaten badly in some games, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think especially, even I think there's even a point now where there's a 15 club push, and then there's three clubs that are just way below bar. Yeah. North Melbourne, Hawthorne, and West Coast. And we're seeing two of them play this week, which will be very interesting, but I think it's going to be a, a very big struggle for any of those three clubs to um, do much this year. Yeah. It's and really I don't even think many of them, because we do see sometimes later in the year, these clubs maybe just pull out a little bit of an upset. I can't see any of them doing it. No. Because I don't think either any of them... I mean, maybe North Melbourne if they can pull something together, but after round, what, three or four, maybe against Carlton when they played okay, North Melbourne have not fired a shot. Yeah. I think they do have a chance this week, which we'll get into a little bit later, but I do think that the other, those three clubs are definitely below par the other ones in the competition. I think Hawthorne are more the, the one that could cause some upsets than North Melbourne or West Coast. You think Hawthorne? Yeah, well, I, I think we've bottled play, them. They're <laughs> playing, I think they're playing better than the other two, but... But it's them three and then the other 15 that are doing anything. So yes. it's, it's pretty much the race for Harley Reid, who um, draft prospects think he's definitely number one. So A lot of people have already said that Melbourne may be looking to get down the draft because they've got like three picks in the first 30 yeah. or something. So Well, if I'm the three, to the um, whoever finishes bottom, I'm not trading it. You're, tra- yeah. you're taking Harley Reid, who's probably the best player out of any him, and then there's like a whole... Uh, it's a huge different, yeah, it's a different class after that, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting who finishes bottom. I don't think... Um, I don't think Hawthorne will now. I don't think so. No. I think they'll they'll probably... I mean, we're not we'll get into the tip. We're not really going to do the tips now, but I do think Hawthorne will win this week against West Coast and be able to knock them away. But, yeah, I think that those three clubs are definitely vying for that wooden spoon. I think that... I don't think any of them are going to want the wooden spoon... But again, they would probably want the number one pick. Mm. And maybe a club would maybe want to trade some picks away to get a really good player. That may be something that they want to do. I think maybe a Hawthorne would want to do that or North Melbourne. I'm not so much West Coast. I think West Coast would probably want to look... Would I think they should be looking for youth. Yeah. But I don't think... Well, maybe West Coast would do it to get more draft picks. Yeah. And they might. Yeah. But anyway. Um, of course, we get to this round, which is... Um, the first of two of the Sir Doug Nicholas rounds, um, Indigenous round for people who are in Australia, I guess, uh, where we celebrate Indigenous culture and the Aboriginal people. And um, one thing which I think um, the AFL does quite well is we have a bunch of um, new and exciting um, jumpers which are designed by Aboriginal people in the community. And today I thought we'd actually look at them and we'll just give them a ranking out of five to one. And I mean, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's not like we hate the people who design them or anything like that. Nothing against those people. But I think it just would be a bit of fun to have a look and just rank them from yeah. five to one. Five being good, one being not so good. So so we'll start with the Adelaide Crows. Uh, this was designed by April Napungari Campbell. And um, me personally, I actually do like the design. Um... I do like the little um, dot, the the dot, dotted art around the uh, middle of the um, the jumper. Um, and I think the yellow, blue, and red actually started out quite a lot on this jumper. Um, I'd probably give it a four. I think it's pretty good. I like the um, crow's jumper here, and yeah, I think they've done a really good job here. Yeah, I think it's pretty. Uh, I think it's okay. I think there's some other um, really good ones. I'd probably only give it about three, but uh, it's me. Yeah, I think that's fair enough, and you're probably biased, so let's be honest. No. <laughs> uh, Next up, we get to the Brisbane Jumper, divine, uh, designed by uh, Des Headland, former, and Ash uh, McGrath, both um, former Brisbane players, and then painted by Kevin uh, Brinder, uh, Binder. Um, I personally... Now, they've obviously got two kits here, one for the home and one for away. 
I do like the away one just a little bit more. Um, I, I mean, the only little change is obviously the yellow, um, yellow background and brown lion. But I actually do like that one just a little bit more. I'm not too sure why. I mean, there are a couple of little dangers, but I think it's just a little bit more brighter. So I'll probably give that one a three. Yeah, I, I really like the away one, which is the yellow one. I think it gives it more... Um, it looks more sharper, in my opinion, than the brown, the brownish one, the maroon of the home one, I assume it's going to be. Um, to, I'd probably only give the, the the home one... I'd only give it two. I, I think the brown in it just destroys it, in my opinion. <laughs> destroys I, it? Well, not destroys <laughs> it, but I think that... The, the, yeah, I think it's just more bolder with the brown line than the... Well, the yeah, maroon line in the Clash one than the yellow in yeah. the home one. I think the away the away one, I think I'd give it about a four, close to a five, in my opinion. Okay. That's yeah. Fair enough. Um, next up, we get to Carlton. Um, I actually really like this design. Um, the only thing that I don't really like about it, and I mean, they had to have it in there, but it's actually the big Carlton um, <laughs> yeah. emblem in the middle. It seems to destroy it, doesn't it? Yeah, it like, seems you've got so much good things about it. Yeah, all the just designs. The... And then just a big Carlton yeah. right in the middle. Uh, yeah. It just destroys it for me. Uh, by the way, this is designed by Rosalina um, Purin Mary. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. That's probably terrible. But um, I'll give it a three. I think the, the Carlton bit in the middle just destroys it for yeah. me. But the, the actual design I really like. Yeah, I, it's colors. really bold, isn't it? Yeah, with the the navy blue of it, it's really bold in. Yeah, and I like know. the light blue on it as well. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah, the, the sea the, ruins it. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the the yeah the actual emblem ruins it. So you'd probably only be about a three. Yeah. Fair enough. Next up, we get to Collingwood, which was designed by Tani Jarvis. Um, it's just a bit boring to me. Yeah, it does. Isn't it's. It? Very safe, I think, that it just looks... It, it doesn't, like, really change anything with the jumper. And I just wish it changed something a little bit more. So I'll probably give this one like, a two. If you look at the the white stripes, is they... Uh, I don't know. Is that... I don't know if that's just the graphics, but <laughs> they haven't changed anything in the white, which I, I don't know what... Um, I guess it's... I don't know. Maybe they can't really do it. Yeah, but yeah, it just looks plain, simple. Probably a one, in my opinion. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just wish there was something a little bit more to do with it, but that's just me. Next up, we get to Essendon, and I actually like this design. I think it's supposed to be a like a bomber um, or or a hawk. Is it supposed to be an animal? Is it a? Hawk? Uh, is it a? I think it's supposed to be sweet, like a, yeah. a jet, like a bomber, like uh, whatever. So I yeah, I, I mean, like it though. I, I do like it. Yeah, I like how they um. They went with a grey instead of a black background, like added the little black um, textures in the middle yeah. of it. And yeah, I think the red um, bomber or whatever it is looks really nice. So I'd give this one a four. Yeah, I'd give it about four as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's pretty the, Yeah, I think yeah. it's pretty nice this one. After that we get to Fremantle. Um, this is probably what actually one of my favourite ones, to be honest. Um, I th I do like the designs of how they've added the um, the V. I like how they've like changed the design for every single V on it. And, um, they've got like the little, um, I think that's supposed to be Tasmania down the bottom. I don't know, really understand why that's there, but, um, I do like the little designs on it. Um, I'd probably give it a four. It's one of my favorite designs, not my favorite though. So I, I do really like it though. So I'd give it a four. Yeah. I'd give it about a four as well. Like it's pretty, um, good in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I can't really see anything else. <laughs> you have already said most of it. Next up we get to Geelong and... I'm not a huge fan of this one. Now, you can see in the back, Tyson Stengel's wearing an away jersey of it. The home one, I'm not a huge fan of. I think it looks way too blue. Just because I th I, when I think of Geelong, I think of white and blue, not blue and white. And I like the away one a little bit better. If I had to give the home one, I'd give it two. The away one, I'd give it three. Yeah, the the blue destroy. Well, not destroy. Yeah, it just doesn't... It's not as a bold statement as the white one, in my opinion. That um, the Titan Stangle is wearing. So, yeah, I'd probably give the same rating a two and a four for the home and away. Yeah, uh, I'll give it a three, but fair enough. Oh, All good. Yeah. Next up, we get to the Gold Coast, and I really like the design of the Gold Coast one as well, but they ruin it again with the big GC in the middle. Yeah, of it. it doesn't. Like, you get the whole. Bo like, Do they really the, need it? I mean, the whole the design a... of it is a sun. You can tell You can tell why that. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, yeah, well, surely it is. I'll assume, surely. Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, I think with the whole um, 
logos. I don't think you need the sponsors and all that in it either. I don't. Yeah, they, I mean, they'd be paid to put yeah, the sponsors on it. So. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I, I, I don't just don't think, think they need the Gold Coast no, on it. No, per se. it just I mean, destroys it. Yeah, I'd, even if they just had the GC on it, like, like you just remove the red part of the the have that like as like a like hollowed out. Just have the GC on it. I think you. I think what you sh- what they should have done is like all the sponsors and all that, even the Gold Coast thing on the back of it. Like the whole design of it would be so much bolder and so much better, in my opinion, more professional. If you didn't have all the other stuff like the sponsors, the AFL logo, and the even the Gold Coast one, especially in this one. Yeah, I mean. From the design, if you remove the other stuff on it, I actually would give it a five. Yeah. But with the GC on it, I'd lower it down to a four. Yeah, I think, yeah, probably the same. Like, the Gold Coast do have some pretty yeah, good they've ones. Got they've some had some good ones in the past. They've had some really good ones in the past, so... Yeah, but I do think that... um, I, I wish they did have at least the GC, like, at least on the back or something. I yeah. just don't like it in the middle, because it does look like... Like you said, it was a sun. It looks it looks like the design would be really, really cool at the back as well to finish it off. But they've just got... You yeah. just had the chapter of GC somewhere. So, mm. yeah. But I do like it. Because there are other jumpers that don't have the logo in them. Mm. But I, that, that is, to be fair, they don't usually have it on their jumper to begin with. Yeah. So, yeah. I just think it's a bit strange. But anyway. Next up, we get to the Giants. I don't mind this one. Uh, I just... I don't know. I feel, I feel like every single time they go with white... Like, they just make it a white jumper. And I always see the Giants as green and the charcoal colour. Uh, sorry, not green. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking of the two greens on their team. The orange and um, charcoal colour. Yeah. So, for me, I'm going to give this a... I do like the design, but, yeah, the colour scheme I'm not the fan of. So, I'd give it a three. I, I like the colour scheme of it. I, I think some of the past ones with the white, it just doesn't make any sense. But I think this one with the white in it does make it more um, bolder, in my opinion. So... I'd give it more of a close to uh, about four, four and a half, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Right. fair enough. After that, we get to the wrong thing I clicked. Idiot. No, because there's a different... Oh. Yeah. Next up, we get to Hawthorne, and I'm not a big fan of it, just because the hawk face really scares yeah, me. Yeah, the, the hawk does... The hawk face doesn't look right, does it? Yeah, it doesn't fit the design of the hawk just for me. Um, I don't mind the the bottom part of the jersey. Mm. I think it actually looks quite nice. It's just the hawk bit in the middle kind of like, sits it's a bit strange. You see the one that bit in the top right, and I that's a more um, better. Yeah, I don't know why they just didn't pick, Yeah, I don't know why they just didn't make that the big hawk. Yeah, in the it's middle. like they wanted to put a head head. The head of something for it. Yeah, the like, head. And it just doesn't... Like, even... Like, you see the emblem of the Hawthorne club. It's a, like, it just... That's a better one than, I think, the, the face of it. It looks like someone, like... Like, if this was a real thing. It looks like someone broke the hawk's neck and faced it that way. Yeah, I know. It doesn't yeah. look like a natural sitting hawk. I think the one in the top right-hand corner actually looks a lot better. Yeah. So, I do like the design of a lot of the... Like, around the, around the hawk... But the hawk itself, I'm not a big fan of, so I'd give this one a two. Yeah, I'd give it about, yeah, two yeah. as well. Next up, we should have North... No, we've got Melbourne. <laughs> Melbourne's next. I really, really, really like the home jersey. Um, it's one of my favourite ones, actually. But the the light blue, just... Uh, it, it is their away yeah. jersey. It's just not their colours. They're, no. not, they're not red and light blue. They're red and dark blue. And it just sits a bit strange for yeah. me. I'd give the, the first one a four and a half. The second one, I'd give it a two. Yeah, I just don't get the the, the clash one. I don't know. Just, mean, do they play someone in the clash game? They must have to play I someone. Think surely, I think they're going to wear it this week against Port Adelaide. I think maybe that's what it is. I mean, I, I guess think, that's kind of fair because yeah, well, Port Adelaide are done. We're not going to go through clash games and all that. We can go here all day with Eddie, but yeah, because... um, yeah, I like the, the the home one for Melbourne. I think that you give it four, four and a half. Yeah. All right, next up we get to North Melbourne. And to be honest, I think this is one of the worst ones. Yeah, I think it is too. Uh, I don't know, understand what that thing in the middle is. I think it's supposed to be... I mean, I know it's supposed to be a football ground, but it looks like a weird-looking potato. It doesn't look like... It doesn't... <laughs> North, no disrespect to the person who designed this, but to be honest, it looks like a, a child drill. <laughs> I'm sorry, it does. I don't mean any disrespect, but... It, I, I, I just I the oval oval in the um, middle of it doesn't 
But like, they've had so many good ones in the, in the past. And plus their emblem, their, their animal promotion, whatever, is a kangaroo. You can make like so you many can, designs yeah, around yeah, the you kangaroo. Can make it so, it's so bold. And I just don't understand why they just decided to put a big potato in the middle of it. Yeah. But you can see on the little bit on the left, to the bottom left there, you can see a little kangaroo. I just don't understand why that wasn't like the forefront of it. Yeah. And why it's a weird looking AFL ground. For one thing as well, it's shaped oval, but it's shaped the wrong way oval. <laughs> the boundary lines are wider than the goal yeah. side, which yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't I'd know. give this one a one. I'd yeah, I'd give it a one. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just don't, don't get it. And like, you've got... Yeah, no, nah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move to the next one. Mm. Next up, we get to Port, uh, to Collingwood. Yes, yeah. Like Collingwood. <laughs> Eddie Maguire. It's, it's, we get up to the Magpies, and I'm a bit surprised that Collingwood added the teal to it. <laughs> I'll stop. Um, to be honest, I do like the design of the Port one. Um, mm. I do like how they've got a big Magpie in it. Yeah. I, I don't know why they did like, that. I think it's a fuck you to Eddie. I'd like to anyway. see um, yeah, Eddie Maguire um, clash with this one, because it looks... Um, yeah, I know. I do like the design of it. Um, I do like how they've added the teal in it as well. Yeah. And all three Burgoynes, I think, had a, a, um, all three generations of Burgoyne had an influence in this um, in the jersey. That's yeah. Fair so, yeah, I really liked it. And I think it's one of the best Port, Port Adelaide ones that they've ever done. Yeah, Port Adelaide have had some pretty poor ones in the past, to be honest. A lot yeah. of them have been like very black with a little tiny bit of teal in it and a little bit of tiny bit of white in it. Yeah. But this one I do like. I'd. I'd probably give it a three and a half. Yeah. I'd probably give it a four. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair enough. After that, we get to Richmond. Um, I do like the Richmond one. Um, I get that they're supposed to be like yellow and black this game because they're like the away team in the um, dream time at the G game. I I feel like they've just had some better ones in the past. That's just mm. me. I do like the design. I just feel like they've had better ones in the past. So I'd give this one a three. Yeah, I'd give it about a three as well. It's just... I, I do really like the the um, yellow in it. Like, yeah, I know it's really it, stand yeah. out. Yeah, it stands out in it. Yeah, so. and another thing as well, which a lot of the other ones may have the issue with, the sponsors don't exactly um, stand out like like dogs balls on them. To be honest, I don't think they stand out as like poorly as like some of them do. Yeah. So that's maybe I maybe I'm completely off off my mark there because the NIB kind of stands out a bit but I do think they have like light and like dark in the um em, uh, sorry sponsor just so it doesn't stand out like dog's balls but yeah I'd, I'd probably give it a two, two, a three yeah mm. after that we get to St Kilda now they've completely changed their um one of their colours and they've made the middle of it yellow obviously to symbolise the um sun on the um the Aboriginal flag, sorry. Um, and yeah, so I do like this one as well. I just, it is a little bit plain. Really, they've only changed one, they've changed a big colour in the middle and then just put some little designs on the left and right. I'd give it a three. Oh, actually, you know, I'll probably give it a two. I think it's just a little bit mm. bare. And I feel like some of them get like go way out there. And I guess that's one with North Melbourne. They went in completely the wrong direction, but at least they tried to give it a go. I think it's just a bit in the middle, so I'm just going to put it as a two. Yeah, I'd give it more of a three, three and a half. Like, you see the sponsor in this one. He just, um, it kind of goes into the design of it. Yeah, I think that's fair enough, yeah. And that's what I think some clubs, I know it's a bit harder to do for for most of them, but but I do like how they've changed the colours to to replicate the, um, the Aboriginal flag, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. After that, we get to Sydney. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I do like this. Oh, they've actually... Have they changed it a little bit? I think they actually mm. have changed it a little bit. Uh, maybe. Because it's very similar to a past one, isn't it? So. Yeah, I think what they've done is they've changed like the white part of it. They've actually yeah. made it into line art. Mm. And they've made the um the red part like circle art. So they have mm. changed it a little bit. But they haven't... They don't change the design every year, which I am a little bit disappointed by, by a Swan supporter because... The two designs that we have are really good, but we've only had two, like really like two Swans um, yeah. Aboriginal jumpers, and I feel like that's a little bit. I don't want that's just a little bit disappointing because they're really good designs, and I really like people to like go on with it and like make some new jumpers for Sydney. That's just me. I don't know, 
But yeah, it just feels a little bit... I'm going to give it a three because I do like the design of it, but it just seems like we've got the same jumper every year. Yeah, I'd, I'd give it about a yeah, three. I do like the colours of it, so yeah. All right, after that, we get to West Coast. And I don't know why, but um, West Coast always seem to nail it. And yeah. I, I agree with this one. This one's probably actually one of, probably my favourite, to be honest. I'd give this one a five. Considering, I mean, at least West Coast will look good when they get beaten by Hawthorne on the weekend. <laughs> but, yeah, I really love the design yeah. of this. The blue stands out. The yellow eagle. That's how the hawk should have been. It should have been like a hawk, not with something that broke yeah. its neck. It's just like the hawk... The, the eagles in the middle, yeah. the sun's up the top. I, I really like this one. I think I'd give this one a five. Yeah, I give it a five. They're gonna get flogged in style like this week. <laughs> flogged in style. <laughs> yeah, flogged in style. And after that, we get to the Western Bulldogs. Uh, I don't know what the hell is happening with the black. Is that a what is that in the middle? I don't know what it is, but mm. it's freaking me out. Um, look. <laughs> It's better than North Melbourne's, but it's not by much, in my opinion. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I'd give I it a two. It's, it's, a one and a half. One it's and a bit half. confusing, isn't it? It's just a bit weird. I don't know what that mm. thing is in the middle. I'd have to maybe look up why the, what that is. I, it looks like a, like an eel. Mm. So I think it's an eel, but it just seems a bit strange to me why they'd put an eel on the Bulldog's jumper. I guess you don't really have a dog on it, but... Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think the Bulldogs actually have some of the weaker Indigenous Guernseys that we've seen. I, th- I don't think remember one like being standalone like stand out yeah. so I'd give this one a one and a half I don't I'm yeah, not yeah, I'd give it about a two yeah. yeah but yeah guys that's our rankings of um, the indigenous jumpers coming this year um, again all no disrespect to any of the artists I think all of them you know a, a big congratulations for making all these jumpers and representing each of the clubs because I do think it's a great concept that they make a different jumper for each year and like showcase some indigenous art. I think it's great to see. But um, next we'll move on. We'll get into the votes for the week. So the first game of the round was the upset, uh, round nine. Uh, Col- Richmond versus Geelong. Now, I didn't really see this coming at all, but Richmond played very good footy and they had some not unlikely goal scorers. Well, I guess Cochin is, but Dusty <laughs> yeah, really well, stood up for the first time yeah. in at least a year or two. Yeah, he, he turned back the clock and Cochin did something that he hasn't done, well, ever. I don't think ever kicked three goals. Oh, he probably has done it three goals, but yeah, he turned back the clock for a while. And I don't. Th- I will say, I don't think this is the resurrection of Richmond. Oh, well, everyone, in, in Victoria, I think they're, they're back to 20, they're back to their destiny. They're yeah. not. They played one good game, but, Geelong aren't always getting, they're not going to win, they weren't going to win 20 in a row. <laughs> yeah. Or how many, are they? yeah, they weren't going to win them all. And I think they did something good though, they did like double team yeah, Tom they, Hawkins. They I think had that's the what chance. they needed, that's yeah. what they, they did that very well. I think a lot of clubs need to start doing that. Yeah, they did a half the Jeremy time. Cameron will never stay, I think that they played Jeremy Cameron up the field and if he kicks, he didn't even kick a goal in that game. No, but, yeah, um, yeah. So he, so, they were able to lock him out of the game, and I think they double teamed him. Um, they did double team Hawkins just to keep him under wraps. So I think that was a good idea. Richmond did play well on this one. Um, so the three votes. This was from you. Yeah. Um, so the three the three votes we gave. To, oh, hang on. Three votes go to Tim Taranto. Uh, I mean, look, he's yeah. not going to be the best disposal. No, he, he had twenty eight disposals at fifty percent. So it wasn't the best use of efficiency, but he was the pressure midfielder with I think twelve tackles. So yeah, and he always gets the the one thing that you know he's going to do. He's a clearance player, and a lot of clearance players don't have the best yeah. disposal yeah. efficiency. Yeah. I'm not uh, like I don't mind what Kane Corn says sometimes, but I think he still is in probably the best one. He's, he's the he's in the right. Yeah. That, well, I think he said this week he had a. He um, bagged him again. He's saying he was from when he last said it in the 120th player in the game to now 140th because of the, after the game. So I do getting... think that he's better than the one. I mean, a lot to say. I mean, there are a lot of players in the AFL. I think he brings up that point, but I think he's still a little bit better than 150. I still think yeah. he's still yeah. one of the better clearance players in the yeah. AFL. Anyway, he got the three votes. Two votes we gave to Dustin Martin for his four goals and yeah. playing quite good footy. And the one vote you gave to Mitch Duncan. Yeah, I think he played better. And I think he did see some vulnerability from the Geelong team in defence. Like, we've always known, if you kick it up high... They'll dominate all day. They'll dominate all day. And the chaos ball could I still don't get why people... I get that some teams don't want to move the ball, just throw it in there, because, you know, they want to move it in with, like... You, they don't want to get beaten on the counter. Yeah. So I get why they don't want to get the ball turned over. But the chaos ball, I think, works against those sort of teams. And I think it works, like, against the Melbournes... 
the college. Like the top teams always have the be- like the better intercept defenders. Yeah. So I don't know why more teams don't just not just bomb it in there, but just surge the ball forward, soccer it in the inside the forward fifty. Yeah. Put it into a put it into space inside the forward fifty. There's no option like when you're going forward. Put it into space. Give you know your small the, forwards yeah. a go. Yeah. But I think that's what a lot of clubs don't do, and I think that they should start doing. It. I think that's what a thing like R- Richmond can beat Geelong for is because Richmond always do have their small forwards and the do pressure. match up a lot better against Geelong than uh, than some other clubs. Yeah. After that, we get to West Coast versus the Gold Coast Suns. This really wasn't much to talk about. No. West Coast are uh, beyond deplorable. And the, one thing was the Gold Coast got their first, uh, sorry, got their biggest win outside of Queensland. Yeah. With a 70 point win. Um, I don't think there's much really to say. No. Just, yeah. Just. I mean, one thing was Ra- Matt Rao played brilliantly. He, he got back to what he did when he first started his career. He got. He burst out of stoppage, but he also got the. He got some, I think he got some easy. Easy ball as well in the game, which yeah. helped. I think if he can hit that form for the Gold Coast and go along with Nora Anderson, I think they could actually yeah be- become a club that pushes for finals, which I think they need to in the next. Yeah. I think they should be. They have to do it this year, but I don't know. I think if those two can just hold, uh, can start moving together as like A graders of the club with Tuke Miller when he comes back. Yeah, you know, I think they could actually perform like as a really good midfield. So, obviously, he got the three votes. This was your votes again. Uh, two votes to Charlie Ballard. He got, like, hugely underrated yeah. defender. Yeah, he was. If he, he was, was playing at Collingwood, he'd be fucking more known. Yeah, if he was playing at Victoria, he'd be t- spoken about. And he, and again, he got, I think, ten intercept marks in the game. Yeah. He just dominated in that, well, especially in the second quarter when they blitzed, when pretty much all the players for um, Gold Coast starred, really. So, he was pretty good. Um and I think the one vote you gave to Jared Witz. Yeah, I gave it to Witsy. He play, He dominated. I yes. Um, ben King kicked three goals, but he kicked four behind. No, he four goals. Four goals. Four, three. Yeah. Maybe the other round. He he did. Yeah, he, he did have a lot more opportunities to kick. Yeah, he kicked four because yeah. I remember he could have kicked yeah, he, five. He, the goals he did get though, they were pretty easy. Like they were pretty much clearance uh, tap from Witz down to Rao to um to, to King. King, and it was. There was just no pressure. There were a couple yeah. of goal, last a couple of moments in the last quarter where you could, you know, kick seven, seven, six or seven goals. But he kicked seven. He probably gets the two votes because I think Rao was dominant through the entire match. So, yeah, yeah. which I think dominated out the mid, middle. Yeah, in that game. Next up, we get to Sydney versus Fremantle. Uh, Fremantle won this game, and a lot of people would have thought the city would have bounced back this week after some poor, some. I mean, a, I mean, a pretty good effort against Collingwood, and. Um, they didn't. They didn't show up. They after quarter time, even even the first quarter, Fremantle were playing really well. They just couldn't convert. They weren't using the ball properly inside four fifty. Oh, sorry, going inside four fifty. But once they fixed that up, they just completely, almost I would say, flogged Sydney in the in the end. I know that the score was only a seventeen point win, but Fremantle did play very good football. And I think if they had a little bit more structure, a little bit more of a plan going forward, I think they could have won this game by a lot more. One person who played brilliantly, yes, Tom Hickey was injured. Was sorry, not injured, but he was his first game back to AFL level for the year. But Sean Darcy, uh, yeah, Sean Darcy played brilliantly. He got the three votes. He was all around the ground. He was marking the football in between the wings to give them an option. Um, Sean Darcy's been very good this year, and I think if Tim English wasn't performing so so well, I think he'd be in the talk for an All Australian. Do you think they could go two? I Australian? mean, maybe, but. When was the last time they did that? It was Max Gorn and Grundy a couple of years ago, I think. Oh, it was Max Gorn and Nat Nui that year. No, there was Grundy and Gorn got it one year. Yeah, I don't, I, it just doesn't seem the norm, does it? Yeah, I don't well. think it could be now. Um, There's too many good midfielders that they want to put in the half forward. And half forward <laughs> and, and, yeah, wing. Yeah, <laughs> wings when they don't play wing in their freaking career. But anyway, he was brilliant. Two votes I gave to Errol Golden. In the last two weeks, despite losing, he's played brilliant footing. Yeah, he's just the, the lo- um, shining light for the Swans in the past month. Yeah, he is one of the few Swans players who I'd give a tick to this year. Mm-hmm. Him, uh, Robbie Fox I'd give a tick, and maybe Tom Papley as well. I know people would probably say Chad Warner, but I think he's been pretty underwhelming in a lot of games this year. So I think he's played... When he's played well, he's played brilliantly. And I think I've given him three votes when he's played really well. But when he's not there, when he doesn't play well, he doesn't have that balance yet. And I think he'll get that with time. So I'm not too concerned about that as a Swan supporter. But at the moment, when he has a bad game, he has really poor games. 
Mm. When he plays well, he has a brilliant game. So when he brings that closer together, I think he's very close to... I think he's definitely got that sort of footballing prowess that he could win at Brownlow in his future. And nonetheless, um, I was going to give the one vote to Luke Jackson. He was very close to getting it. He played very well. But he played very well for three quarters. And when City did come back in that last quarter, the one player that stood up for me and got the one vote was Caleb Sarong. Mm. I think he's playing brilliantly, brilliantly this year for Fremantle. And um, he... He played very well in that last quarter when they needed him most, so I gave him the one vote. After that, we get to Port Adelaide versus North Melbourne. Um, not much to talk about here. <laughs> not much to talk about here. Port Adelaide played very well. Um, they beat North Melbourne when North Melbourne were poor, and they, they, couldn't, yeah. they couldn't move. They didn't play well at all. The thing was, they didn't get four injuries in the game, which didn't. it's not going to help for North Melbourne, and it was to... Luke Davis Uniac didn't help, so... Yeah. But their effort in... In the contest and around the ground, it's just poor. It's it's below AFL standard in my opinion. And David King gave him a spray on the weekend after the after the round. So yeah, it'll yeah, be interesting what what their response is. Yeah. So nonetheless, three votes we gave to Zach Butters. He's played very well this year since moving yeah. into the midfield the, in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, he's the fourth rated player and most rated player in the game in the past month. So he's just turning it. He's, it looks like he's definitely living up to the hype that he had when he was um, draft year. Yeah. And um, when we looked at the leaderboard for the votes that we've been doing, I think he was third at the yeah, moment. He's, yeah. We may next week actually just show you guys the the, um, the points so far in the first 10 rounds. But I do want to keep a little bit under wraps because, I mean, you could, if you want to, you can go tally it. But I, I want to do like a thing at the end of the year where we like do a, a brown low count. Like, you know, yeah. you do 3 2 1, 3 2 1, and, you know, we go through it. So probably the, in the, maybe in the last two weeks I won't actually give the votes on what publicly and I'll keep them under wraps mm. and then we'll read them out in like a live, in a live stream which I think would be cool but anyway three votes Zach Butters brilliantly brilliant played brilliantly two votes Jeremy Finlayson um, there's been a couple of games this year where he's just lit it up yeah he just, I think playing him up the ground in the ruck has helped him and helped he's also a very like, very good ball user yeah he's a good ball user he is a very good field kick yeah and the one vote we gave to Miles Bergman. Yeah. Um, yeah, he looks like he's definitely taken that role this year um, off of, obviously, losing Carl Amon. They've definitely... I yeah. think that Kane Farrell didn't really come on, but Miles yeah. Bergman's came on. He was injured last year, so he obviously was a bit in and out of the team. But this year, he's definitely came on as that wingman, yeah. but, that connector. And, and playing a bit half-back as yeah. well when I think Kane Farrell was out a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But he's also... The thing for Port Adelaide is they need to be able to keep him because there's rumours that he's going to go back to Victoria... And yeah. I, they just need to sign him, and they need to do it now, really. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what will North Melbourne just throw fifteen million dollars at him like they did with Jared Pollock? And oh, that was a good one. Wasn't it? I think we we're, were happy to give up him for. Yeah, yeah that was. Oh, and um, in in Pittard as well. That was. I'm not gonna say what I what I used to call him because <laughs> shit up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> anyway, after that we get to Hawthorne versus Melbourne. This game was. Pretty poor. It was I done mean, by quarter time. It was done by quarter time. <laughs> Melbourne have had a couple of easy weeks, and I mean, if they've got the t- if they've got the team to beat in front of them, might as well drill them into the ground. Yeah, they won by fifty four points. This should have been a hundred, really. If Melbourne actually wanted to, they would. Yeah, been. they could, they pretty much stopped it. Oh, maybe quarter time. <laughs> quarter time. <laughs> quarter like, time. What, they kicked the first five points of yeah. the game. It was like if they kicked five goals, it was done. It would be a hundred easily. Yeah. Anyway, the three votes I gave to Christian Petrarca. He's played brilliantly in the, especially the past month. Mm. I think maybe he actually could have all 12 votes for Melbourne game. Oh, no. He almost had 12 votes. I think he has 11 because of the Gold Coast game the week before. But um, Christian Petrarca has played brilliantly. And for people who were saying, including me, that Clayton Oliver was going to win the Brownlow, he was taking a lot of votes off of it. Yeah, well, I said that he, both of them would never win the Brownlow because of it. Anyway, the two votes I did give to Clayton Oliver, he played very well in this game. And the one vote I gave to Jack Viney. Jack mm. Viney played brilliantly in that game as He's well. He's playing alright, isn't he? It's just Jared the thing. Viney. I mean, when before Oliver and Petrarca were there, he was there like prime midfielder. Yeah. Everyone was talking about Jack Viney, how much of a midfielder he's going to be. But because Oliver and Petrarca have came on and have been the talking point, Viney just gets a little bit under the wraps. Yeah. But he is still a very good midfielder. Yeah. After that, we get to Brisbane versus Essendon. Um, I was streaming this game, and Brisbane... Essendon stayed with them for the first half, and I thought, oh, maybe they could catch back, but Brisbane were just too good in the end, and they just dominated, led by the former Essendon player, Joe Danaher. He kicked six goals. He had a massive game in this one. Took some great marks. And honestly, 
in the past six weeks when Brisbane have started to play well, he has played brilliant football. Yeah, he's he just been moving up the ground and... They have yeah, he's been the second ruck, but yeah. he's also he's always so he's also playing as like yeah. that half forward, like um, uh, who were we just mentioning uh, a couple of games ago, uh, Jeremy Finlayson. Yeah. But obviously, I think, a little bit, well, obviously a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> but I think um, the the actual um, small forwards are actually pressuring the ball, actually pressuring the the um, defenders. Yeah, they're not just it's it used to be kick kick, kick inside fifty and kick it out of, or a score. It's just. Yeah, Charlie Cameron is definitely playing a lot more defensive this year as well. He's, yeah. he's definitely got a defensive mindset in. There were a couple of moments last week where he's chasing down tackles when he looked he was intent to tackle. You know, yeah. you know the difference between a player who's going like chasing someone because you have to, or chasing someone because you want to. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he was definitely playing brilliantly, Charlie Cameron. He's played very well the past few weeks, and he even had a, a I think it was a month ago against the Giants. He kicked seven goals, had a career best. Yeah. But anyway, three votes went to Joe Danaher. He was brilliant in this game. He was always going to get three votes. Two votes we gave to Dane Zorko. He played very well in this game as well. And I think when he's in the team, he, they're just a lot better. Yeah. Um, and the one vote I gave to Will Ashcroft. He's definitely um, came on this year, obviously being drafted and everything. It was being the big talking point. I think Harry Sheasel is by far leading the um, NAB Rising star, even though Ashcroft was definitely mm, favourite to win it. I don't know. I think it's I think it's get back to neck and neck now. I think um, Sheasel started so well, but I think now with them losing... And you see that Ashcroft coming into the midfield more, getting more um, centre bounce um, time. That he's starting to get shot, um, more limelight, in my opinion. Mm. Well, he still got the one vote. He played pretty well. Yeah. After that, we get to Carlton versus the Bulldogs. Now, um, this game was really, really sl- like from what I've heard. I didn't watch a lot of this game because I was watching the Brisbane one at the time. But this was just an absolute slugfest for three quarters. The teams, they were missing goals. They couldn't kick goals at Marvel Stadium. The last few weeks, there's been games at Marvel Stadium where the teams can't kick goals, and it's really yeah. strange. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, I mean, it's not like there's a wind issue out there. Well, yeah, but... In the end, the Bulldogs did pull away, and they played quite well. Artie Jones had a brilliant last quarter for um, the Western Bulldogs, so mm. he definitely looks like he's coming on. It was a little bit surprising that he was holding his spot for those few weeks at the start. Yeah. But he actually did come on, but and he's playing quite well. You, you want to know an interesting stat? Is that this is I don't know what Vossi is doing, but Charlie Kerno was targeted four times inside fifty this week. Mackay was targeted eight times. Yeah. Kerno has kicked thirty three goals. He was targeted four times. You tell me what the hell Colton are doing? Well, I think they were. T- I think I have a guess. I have a s- suspicion that he was told because they could just kept them bombing it on their heads that they told him to look elsewhere. Because I always did kick three goals in this game. Yeah, but they play. They, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like the stupidest game style of Carlton goal at the moment, going inside fifty. And I did say in like the little hot take at the bottom. I said Carlton is soon becoming the most disappointing team of twenty twenty three with an, with with on the best of. With one of the best forward combinations in the competition, but time after time again, continue to waste the potential of Mackay and Kerno. Mm. So, I mean, I, I think that he, not many teams have the best... Comp, like, Geelong have really good two forward line, two, two forwards. I was going to say Brisbane, but I don't think Eric Kipwood's worth much. <laughs> no offense yeah, to him. He's not playing, yeah. He's not playing that well. But, I mean, honestly, those two, and I can't really name it... Oh, like, they're two genuinely good forwards. Yeah. I can't really name anyone else who's got the best in the competition other than them and Carlton. Yeah. One team won a premiership last year. The other one looked like they may miss the eight yet again and still continue not to say that it's... Look, it's a it's a disaster if they don't make the finals this year. I don't know why anyone is arguing that. Yeah. It's, it is a disaster. They have such a good team on paper. They have such a good team in general. But they're losing games of footy to teams that they should be beating. Yeah. Anyway, um, nonetheless, Bulldogs played well. <laughs> they won this game, they pulled away late. Three votes I gave to Tom Liberatore. He played really well in this game, had a lot of clearances, and um, even though Bontempelli played quite well in this game too, he definitely led the midfield to not, in that yeah. not, uh, on Saturday and night. And he did, um, Liber did kick that goal when Carlton were in front, I think it was, in that last quarter. He kicked the, um, what's the word, stabilising goal? No. The, well, it, he got back the momentum in yeah. that last quarter to get them the win for the Bulldogs. So. Uh, with the two votes I gave to Marcus Bontempelli, he's definitely playing very well this year. I don't think, like a lot of people are saying, he's got a Brownlow lock, locked up, though. 
uh, I've went through the votes of ours, and I'm not saying that ours is like the Brownlow, but with a lot of games, he has been beaten. So, Tommy mm. Rattori has actually taken a few games off him, too. Yeah, I think he's played it. Well, he's not played as good as Bontempelli, I don't think, but I think he's, he's played, played a good game. Yeah. Probably one of his better years. I think <laughs> probably since 2016, he's definitely up there. Yeah. In the one vote I gave to Bailey Smith, this, he's had a pretty disappointing start to the year. He obviously had um, the suspension at the start of the year as well, was that? Was that last year? No, that was last year. Oh. He, he was injured a couple of weeks he ago. He was though. injured, that's what I was yeah. meant. Yeah. He was injured, but he, he played a little bit more midfield time tonight because of the Trelaw um, being injured. Mm. And um, he actually played quite well, so I gave him the one vote. On Sunday afternoon, we had Adelaide versus St Kilda, and Adelaide proved that if you score, I mean, anything... 70 plus you're going to beat St Kilda really yeah and they went above and beyond that they yeah. kicked 19 goals 7 so they kicked straight so you got to give them that but they also just dominated this game yeah. and yes it's because it's in in South Australia but also they played very well yeah I, I don't know what um, people in Victoria are going to say about this but um, I think that they're saying that St Kilda there's not much of a worry about them but there is there's a clear worry about the Saints at the moment they can't kick a winning score if they can defend so well, but if they come up against the big teams in finals, they're not going to stack up against them. Well, they haven't played a Geelong yet. They haven't played a um, Melbourne. Melbourne. They haven't played a lot of these teams who have a very potent and forward line. They haven't played Brisbane either, which is yeah, exactly. I think one of, yeah, and the Crows, uh, we have said before, had one of the better forward mm. lines going into the season. So, look, look what happens. They come up against one of the best forward lines in the comp, really on. On paper and also in stature, and they dominated. Yeah, they killed them. They nearly beat them by six. They nearly beat them by ten goals. Yeah, I mean that's that's what happens. They only you got to have some sort of forward structure in this day and age. I mean that's a big reason why Ross Lyon didn't win his premiership back in 20, 20, 2009 and two thousand and ten. Yeah, because they didn't have a they didn't have a forward line option. To, I mean, sorry, they had a forward line option, but they didn't have like the forward prowess that you need in football. They, they, had have, one, yeah, they had one or two options, maybe three, but they didn't have... Uh, and they've got less now. Yeah. They've got less now, so I, I don't think that they're going to be pushing for a grant. I don't. I think they'll squeeze into the eight at this rate. Because I don't know. I, I think they're... They're, weird. they're you know, it's they're really interesting. Down. But I, I think they'll still scrape in, because I think they'll get enough wins against the bottom teams, because they've got mm. a decent... Re- I think they'll beat the teams that are below them. Because they can just choke them to death. Yeah. But when they get to a team like Brisbane, like the Crows, if they, if they play the Crows, the Collingwood, like the teams they can play in finals, yeah. Um, they, Geelong, yeah. you know, these sort of teams that they will meet in finals, they're going to struggle. And even against Port Adelaide a couple of weeks ago, Port Adelaide just kicked 12 goals, they won the game. Yeah. So, I mean, against teams like West Coast, Hawthorne, North Melbourne, all these sort of teams, they're going to win them. But they're not going to beat the top teams if they don't find a different way to go forward. Yeah. And maybe Max King will help that a little bit, but not a lot because they don't have. It's not. It's not the way. It's not the personnel. I don't think anymore because we've seen they've been able to win games with that personnel. Yeah. It's the way they. It's just Ross Lyon, unfortunately. And I. Just, I don't know. But anyway, let's just move into the votes. Taylor Walker got the three votes. He played brilliantly. He kicked, um, I think, five goals in this yeah, one. Yeah, five. Um, two votes I gave to Jordan Dawson, and honestly, I I don't know what the odds are. This would be pretty odd or idea, but Jordan Dawson, I think, a bit of a smoky for the Brownlow at this rate. He's playing brilliantly and taking uh, a lot of votes as the Brownlow. Well, when they win, he's going to get probably two. He's going to get two or three votes in yeah. the games that they've won this season, and it's going to be interesting. I think he was second on the leaderboard of our votes at the moment, yeah. and especially this last month when they've been playing pretty good. I mean, he got three votes in the game. I think against Collingwood when they lost. He played yeah, brilliantly in that he, game. Even the games they lost, but he's played, played brilliantly because yeah. the, not. I mean, maybe it's because I don't know why. But a lot of teams haven't. I mean, maybe it's just because the tag may be somewhat dead. But a lot of people aren't going to him either. No, because he's. I think they're more worried about Laird than they are um, Dawson. Dawson at the moment, but I think I Dawson's. Think, I mean, he's such a good kick yeah, for footy, and when he's in he, clearance, he can kick it a long way. Mm. So when he's when he's out of clearance and he's on his own. He's a, a brilliant ball user, mm. and when he's in clearance and he, you know, he doesn't have the time or options to pick from, he just bombs it and he can kick it sixty meters for you. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, I gave him the two votes, and the one vote I gave to Brody Smith. He played very well off halfback in this game. And finally, we get to Collingwood versus GWS. Now, I thought the Giants actually would have to give a good fight in this one, and they didn't. <laughs> so yeah, it seemed like that was the game style. Well, um, King, uh, 
Adam Kingsley's style that they were going to be competitive and, you know, they really weren't. Yeah, <laughs> but it has been the first time this year I think they haven't been competitive. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's the first time being at the MCG under, under him, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. It just seems... And one thing they did bring up in the broadcast was the fact that they, nothing's changed on their defensive attributes of the game. They did not pressure Collingwood at all. Mm. They let Collingwood get away. And if you're not going to pressure Collingwood, they're just going to chop you up all day. Well, Dacos had 40. <laughs> he had 40. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, they... they Everyone a lot of those them. were, and I know if any Collingwood supporters are watching, I'm sorry, but a lot of, like, at least half of them were just junk. Kickouts? Junk. Yeah. Like, like, maybe like, kickouts and, like, you know, little handballs around the back getting a yeah. short little kick. He did have a lot of influence. He did have a little bit more influence in this game than he did against Sydney. He actually played quite well in this game, but he had a lot of junk to but, get up to 40. Uh, like, um, Ken, he said King, uh, uh, Adam Kingsley before the game that... He doesn't like how Sydney went about it, like how they went it. So what, you thought letting him go? But, but I thought that, like you've known the Giants, that the boy used to do it every game for him. They needed someone to, Lucky Ash has done it in the past for him. Like, I think you had to have someone on him. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. He would have got the three votes, to be honest, but one player who played really, really, really well was Mason Cox. I didn't see the game, so I can't, I can't comment on this. <laughs> you don't like Mason Cox. I know, I know, yeah, yeah. But okay. anyway, he played brilliantly in this one, and um, this was the first time I'm going to give him... I don't think you'll ever get this many votes again, but he got three votes in this one. He played, had to play the ruck role to, in this game mm-hmm. and the connector role, and he played brilliantly. So I gave him the three votes. The two votes in the end I did give to Nick Dacos. He had 41 touches, and he did have a lot of influence in this game. He did play very well, but there were a lot of those touches that were just junk. Mm. But one person that I did give a one vote to, and someone who I think has been a little bit not not under underrated this season, but he's playing a lot more of a role for Collingwood than he ever did in his other clubs, and that's Tom Mitchell. I gave him the one vote. Yeah, he just he's using influence on his disposals now than just getting a gimme touch. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I think under involved. McRae, I think that's what um, he's brought to Mitchell's game is that you're not going to play the you're going to play a team game. Yeah. Which I think McRae's bought into the Collingwood um, football club. So, but now let's get into the tips for this week. So um, we'll start with Port Adelaide versus uh, Melbourne, and this game is going to be a pretty big one because um, it's the start of Sir Doug Nichols' round for the f- for the two rounds. Um, both clubs are in the top four. Both teams are playing very well. Yeah, and being at Adelaide Oval as well gives Port a huge chance. Yeah. However, I can't go past Melbourne at the moment. They're no, playing they're, brilliantly. Yeah. I can't either. They, I don't trust Port. I don't. I, I just don't. Yeah, they don't. Uh, yes, they beat St Kilda, but the last couple of weeks it doesn't really show, does it? Um, yeah, they beat Brisbane. That was round one. You don't really take any um, context out of that. So, Port Adelaide's biggest test is this week. I think Port, just, if they win this one, I'd give them a lot more trust in the competition. Yeah, I think. For, Even though it's at Adelaide, I lost to them. Yeah, I, I think, think if you're going to give the land, the AFL landscape a shake. Port Adelaide have to win this to give them a bit more respect, but I just don't see Port, um, Port Adelaide winning this week. So we're both picking Melbourne for that yeah. one. Next up, we get to North Melbourne versus Sydney. This is at Marvel Stadium Saturday afternoon. This is such a danger game for Sydney, mm-hmm. I think. I know I, I've, we talked about this before we started. I know you don't have the same thoughts. I think this is a huge danger game for Sydney. I actually have tipped North Melbourne in this one. No, you haven't. I have tipped North Melbourne no, in this one. No, you haven't. <laughs> Sydney have lost Callum Mills to injury. He mm. is our best midfielder. We've lost um, Lo- Logan McDonald, who's arguably been our best tall forward this year. Yeah. We have... And one thing that I know, I know a lot of people aren't mentioning, but this is a huge factor for this game. Nick Larkey's had a huge record against Sydney in the past two or three times they've met. I think he's kicked five goals plus in the last two or three times we've met North mm. Melbourne. And that's when we had Rampy McCartan... Well, Rampy and Tom McCartan. I don't think Paddy was in the the one before that one. But I think Nick Larkey could strangle hold the Sydney defence. Because I don't know if Tom McCartan's in this game. I think he's a week by week basis. If he's not in this game, I, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm changing this tip anyway. But I think North Melbourne are going to pull this one off. And I know Luke Davies Uniac is probably out. I think he's yeah, out. he's out. He's out. But I still think because Sydney lost Callum Mills, who I think is our best def- true way runner. I don't give. I, Look, I think Sydney could win this game, obviously, but I give North... And I think as well, the Clarko factor against John Longmire is going to be something that we saw Stuart Jew do in the first few times against the Swans. He gets them up for this game. Mm. I'm picking North. 
yeah, I, I just can't. I don't have that much confidence. And the I think North uh, Sydney have won ten of the past eleven against the the, the Roos, so it's just hard to. And like you said, it's a dangerous game for Sydney, and I think. I don't know. I think the forward, the defenders on North Melbourne side will get destroyed by Buddy. I just they don't have Mackay. Uh, Mackay is playing pathetic. Same with Core. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of scrutiny on them this week after the the Port game. But I just can't. You just can't. And without Luke Dave's Uniac, I don't think they can win. So Sydney, I think. After that, we get to the Bulldogs versus the Crows. This one's a pretty big one. This one's down in um, Ballarat. Down Ballarat. So this is going to be freaking cold. It's going to be a, it's going to be a slugfest. I mm-hmm. think. I'm not too sure about the weather, but the weather's never sunny and you know no. sunny in Ballarat. Let's just put it that way. Um, the Bulldogs have been in very good form. They've won over. The, I think they've won their last four or five games. They're playing good, some good footy. The Crows are obviously playing very good as well. I should check in to see why I tipped them as well. <laughs> I I, I I did pick the Crows in this one. They are playing very good at the moment. If it rains, I may actually change my tip on this one. Mm. But at this stage, I'm going to pick the Crows. I think they're just playing a little bit better. Yeah, I've went the Crows. I Yeah, I don't know. It, but it's, it's, such a, it's going to be a close game, I think. Yeah, I, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a low-scoring game, I think, because it's down there. It's a very windy ground and very open ground. So I think the Crows won down there last year. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was the game that Billy Frampton dominated when yeah. he was out there. So, it's going to be interesting. I think the Crows do win, though. After that, we get to Fremantle versus Geelong. Um, if this was last week, I'd be saying Geelong all day. Even though it's in Perth, it, it, I would still be picking Geelong all day. But we saw that Geelong do have a bit of a weakness against Richmond. And we saw that Fremantle, if they play well, can score. Yeah. I'm going to be picking Geelong, and they will be my certainty pick for the week. However, I'm not 100% confident. If this was down in Geelong, 100 point win to Geelong. Mm. <laughs> Maybe not that much, but I would be picking Geelong 100%. Mm. Just because it's in Perth, I give Fremantle a bit of a chance, but I still think I'm confident enough that Geelong will win this one. Yeah, yeah, I have to go Geelong. I, yeah, they've scored 200s in a row, Fremantle, for the first time, I think, since 2016. Something. Maybe 2019, I can't remember what it was. Um... But you just can't trust their forward line to score a winning score every week for the Dockers. But you can with the the Cats. And I think they will get... Uh, Chris Scott will get to the players and rip them a new one, really. What a response. Yeah, they'll get a response and John will win. After that, we get the Saturday night, the Q Clash. Brisbane versus the Gold Coast. Um, Brisbane will win. I think Brisbane yeah. will win this game. This is at the Gabba. But I think if the Gold Coast want to prove they want to make finals... I'm not saying they have to win this one, but they have to keep it close. The amount of Q clashes that happen and they're just blown out by the Brisbane Lions is just pathetic. I think the Gold Coast need to play really, really well on this one and, and get it close, but I think Brisbane will win this one pretty comfortably. Yeah, I think they'll win it comfortably. Like you said, it's at the Gabba, they never lose there. The um, Gold Coast just wouldn't need to get some respect in the Q clash because I think, the, I don't know what the average is, but I think it's like 12 goals the difference between... Yeah. In games in the Q Clash, it's, it's really pathetic. It's not. A, it's not a rivalry. It's just yeah, you can't count as a rivalry until no. there's an actual. There's yeah. two teams battling Actually, it out. Yeah, it's not. It's not a contest. But I just like they did against Melbourne. Yeah, it's they not a contest. Win. I want a four get a four quarter performance from the Gold Coast. Yeah. They don't need to win. They just need to show up. Yeah. and perform and play the game the style they've been playing the last month of footy. Yeah. After that, we get to Dream Time at the G Richmond versus Essendon. This is a really interesting one because I think last week I would have been picking Essendon. But because Richmond now have beaten uh, Geelong, I'm giving Richmond a, I'm giving them the tip in this one. I'm giving them the tip. And I don't know 100% why. I just trust Richmond a little bit more than Essendon at the moment. Yeah, I've went to Bombers. <laughs> I don't know. I just... The, month, the last month has been bef- uh, well below standard, but... I just don't trust Richmond. I just... I don't know. It's just <laughs> such a, a bloody horrible game to tip. And then, yeah, I don't know. I This could go either way. This, this could, could go either way. This, yeah. I think this is such a hard game to tip. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've went the Bombers reluctantly. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. After that, we get the Sunday early game. Sunday afternoon. Hawthorne versus West Coast oh, down at Blockbuster. Down Tasmania. Well, this one I think decides the wooden spoon. Honestly, I think this could yeah. definitely decide I, the wooden spoon. Because I think 
Um, oh, is it Hawthorne play North Melbourne again, and then I think they're uh, Hawthorne and Eagles play again later in the year. So, well, I think if the, maybe not, maybe at the site. The, the, I think this will actually decide who finishes lower than the other because I think I, I don't know. This just this just sucks. This game <laughs> it just sucks. I'm picking Hawthorne because it's in Tassie. That's it. That's all I'm changing my pick for. Yeah, I'm going the same as Hawthorne. It's down in Tasmania. They do play well down there, and yeah. despite them hating bit hating playing down there, as James Sisley. Yeah, there's, nothing, there's, <laughs> no, nothing, there's nothing to do down there. There's nothing to do down there. It fucking sucks. But yeah. we want a team there. Yeah, I'm just yeah, joking. But I'm picking Hawthorne. Yeah, I went Hawthorne. I just yeah, you have to pick someone. <laughs> you have to. After that, we get to probably the biggest game of the round. Maybe not game of the round, but it's definitely the biggest. Carlton oh, versus Collingwood. Oh, oh, yeah, no, you're probably right now. Port Adelaide, Melbourne. But yeah. Which we'll get to in a second. We'll get to the um, multi at the end of the tips. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, Carlton versus Collingwood. I'm picking Collingwood, obviously. Collingwood are by, by far better than Carlton. Carlton should be def- we should be getting this down to the wire, but they won't. This, no. I don't trust Carlton one bit now. And... I'm picking Collingwood and I think they'll win this one pretty well. Yeah, I think it's going to be... There'll be a, a huge crowd for it because... It always is. But, yeah, uh, Collingwood win by probably about 40 points, 40 plus points. They're going to absolutely kill them off the ground. Yeah. And finally, we get to GWS versus St Kilda at Giant Stadium to finish off round 10. I'll pick the Saints. I think they um, should win this one. I think they'll lock GWS away. They they'll like I said a little bit earlier. They'll be able to they'll be able to lock away teams that are below them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this will, they'll just choke. They'll just choke GWS out of this game. Yeah, I've put my certainty on the Saints this week. Yeah, I just, the Giants don't have enough forward they don't have enough, to fucking. Like besides them. Hogan, who's actually playing well this season, I'll give him credit for that. Well, they've and, already moved Harry Himmelberg back. And now. Harry Himmelberg doesn't have a spot. Toby Green. Just I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know. I think. I think. I think Cal Wilkie's the perfect match. No, I think uh, he'll go. To, oh no! Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because either him or Patton, I think, will go to him, and um, Battle will go to Hogan. So it, they've got the matchups. They've yeah, got. Dougal will go. Uh, sorry, Dougal. Dougal will go to him, and yeah. Um, yeah but there were so many options to just go ba- to Toby yeah. Green if he if he gets away. They've I think got, yeah, they've Cal got the options for it. And plus, one thing that happened last week was Cal Wilkie had a shocker. Yeah. And he doesn't do that very often, so and he'll be his own worst enemy. He'll be he'll put all the pressure back on himself. So he will absolutely come out back in this up. game. Yeah, he'll back up, and yeah, they're certainly on the Saints this week. <laughs> so um, round uh, game of the round this week is Port Adelaide versus Melbourne. This is the game that I'll be streaming. Uh, obviously, uh, big game starts. Uh, so double nickels round, but because we're on we're doing this on a Tuesday, we actually can do a multi for it. Because the last yeah. few weeks we've been doing it on a Monday and we can't do a multi for that. But um, obviously go check out Jackpot Junkies over on Instagram. I do always have it linked in the description so you guys can go check it out. But we'll get into the multi for this week between Port Adelaide and Melbourne. Yeah, I've went I've went a simple one. I just want I just want to win. <laughs> I didn't get the, you gotta the, promote it like it's like nah, yeah, winning nah. every day. Yeah, I win it every day. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've got a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I think um but Tracker is playing so well at the moment. He's uh I've went for tag. Yeah, Port uh, yeah, if they do they'll go to um Oliver anyway. So I've went with Tracker for twenty five, I think that's pretty simple. Um I've went Rosie, he's done it in I think how many rounds is it? Nine. Uh, yeah. yeah, so he's done it seven of the nine rounds this season. He's over 20. So he should be able to do it again. And I think they're more likely to tag Butters at the moment, how good he's going. So if anyone's going to go to him. I've went Angus Brayshaw for 20. I think he's playing um, consistent football in the midfield and off halfback. So. And I think um, the handicap of just went Melbourne to win. Just by more than a point, so they'll win, and that's just about um, yeah, just that that's the multi. I think just a simple one, just to start off the week. It's going to be a pretty big, big two weeks in Sir Douglas Nichols round, so yeah, we might as well start off with a good win. Yeah, I think let's hope. And of as always, guys, when you gamble, gamble responsibly. Yeah, but let's get into our final piece of today's podcast, which are AFL fantasy. For any of you guys watching out there, I'm sure you guys most. Of it, People now who watch 
footy who are like diehard footy fans would be doing AFL fantasy or super coach yeah. or whatever. I don't really do. We don't really do super coach just because I've only too many. I've only too many mechanics, mechanics in it. Too, too many, many stats. Stats that they track and I think AFL fantasy simple. We're dumb. <laughs> we're dumb. We need. Yeah, we need. Mate, we need we dumb. Simple. Simple. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, um, this week I actually scored quite well. I scored two thousand two hundred ninety four, which may not sound like much, but that's pretty good for a ra- for this round. Um, let me just quickly check how much it was actually. Yeah, it was um. It was ranked three hundred and ninety in the in the world. Yeah, because the, the highest um, was only two ninety uh, two three nine six nine eight. Ooh, close. So yeah, so it wasn't that big this week because a lot of the big time the mid the premium players yeah. just didn't score. They they just decided to only perform for one week for fantasy um, players yeah. this week this year. So yeah, luckily for me, I don't have a lot of premium. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was lucky for that. But um, anyway, um, I had Tim Tarano as my vice at the start of the round. So I just took the 129. And luckily I did because not many, not many other people... I mean, if I had on Errol Gould, I, I would have been fucking laughing. I, I screwed it. I would have been laughing. We'll get that in a minute. <laughs> we'll get that in a minute. But anyway, my trade for this week, I got rid of Liam Stocker. Um, he's actually done really well. I mean, it was definitely a point of difference at the start of the year. Not many people picked him. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised that he got all the way up to the, from about 400. He got to 630, so I was happy mm. with that. Yeah. But now I'm going to get Rory Atkins. I'm a little bit concerned that he's gone higher, lower, and lower again. It was still 75, and in that game, I don't know why, but a lot of the Gold Coast players didn't score very well. Noah Anderson didn't get 100. The only player who like scored well was Charlie. Was like I think Ballard and Rao. and Rao. So uh, I think Jared Witts as well. But a lot of the other players didn't score very well. But anyway, I got I got Roy Atkins. He is only five hundred, and his break even is pretty low. So I'm expecting that even if he does pretty bad, at least he'll he'll go up in price. Mm. And my other trade was I got rid of Jackson McRae. I was hoping and hoping and hoping that his form would come back, but it's round nine now, or round ten, but round nine finishing up, and he just won't fucking score. So he only scored two hundreds earlier in the year, and after that, he hasn't scored a hundred since like round three. So. I finally got rid of him. I'm actually going to get Jaden Short. Um, I was going to get Rory Laird, but they keep on saying that he's injured, and I'm just a little bit shaky on a late change. What did he get? He got he got 108, and he also got he also got um subbed out of that game. It was as mm. precaution. Sorry, it was only sorry, it was only just resting him because they were winning that game. I so much they're saying, but I'm just a little bit concerned about it. I yeah. just I don't know. And also, Jaden Short, since he came back from injury, he scored four hundreds. Mm. So and he's also playing midfield time for Richmond now, and I think now that Dusty Martin and Trent Cochin, I don't think they're going through there much more. So I think now that he's going to take that midfield role, and I'm going to get Jaden Short. So those are my trades for this week. Um, captain will be on Toronto for the moment, and my vice will be on Marcus Pontempelli because that's the early Saturday game. So hopefully against the Crows he scores well and gets a lot of tackles too because it will be a very cold, dewy sort of contest down in down in Ballarat. But anyway, let's get to your team. Oh uh, yeah, I got two thousand one ninety five. So I did okay. It wasn't great, but I stupidly I went um I looked at my app before the um the Geelong game and I saw that um Tom Stewart did pretty well in the last like six games or uh, last three or four games against Richmond. So, and he normally dominates in the games. And he, aver- he averaged 94. So I thought... Cause Why I have you changed it on 94? No. Torino yeah. hasn't scored 100 this year. He's scored 100 every single game yeah, this I year. Yeah, I thought, well, he's back in form, to, um, Stuart. And I thought, yeah, let's go for it. And I thought it would be uh, different. Because I've been pretty lucky with my vice-captains this season. So I thought, well, let's try... Let's try um, Ride of the luck, and it screwed me hard. I mean, you got ninety six, but yeah. you didn't take. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't take ninety six, and I and I kept it on um, English, and he's had a shit game fantasy wise. What did he get? Ninety two. That's not that shit. Well, he did worse than my vice. <laughs> so, yeah, shit. Yeah. And so, um, Tim Tarano scored one hundred and twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, did you have it on him as vice captain? It's on before. on Tarano, yeah. yeah. I had it on, and the hour before the game, I thought, yeah, let's just try and run the luck, but. Um, yeah, I was really, I really was annoyed at. Um, I think sometimes you get a little bit greedy. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I've, I've, tried I've had that happen to me as well. Like I get greedy. I'm yeah, like, but I think, oh, you know what? I think he's gonna get one fifty, and then you're like, yeah. oh fuck. I think um, that's why I just stuck with Tarana. I was like, he's he's good for a hundred. Yeah. I'll just leave it on him. Yeah, and I think um, Fiorini really let me down. I thought he'd score well when he just didn't. The first I was hoping for ninety. Team. He got sixty five. Yeah, and I thought oh, sh- it shot me in the foot. And um, what was it? Chincotta, Chin- oh my god, I don't know why. I put him on my team last week, he scored a good 70 of I think it was. I was waiting week. for this, yeah. I was like, one more week, if he gets 70, I'll get rid of Stocker and get a 200 yeah. player, put him in the team and have a huge amount of cash. Yeah. But he got 22, I'm like, I'm, I don't trust yeah, that. And I, 
Yeah, and McGrath is just annoying me. He 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 just because they've got so many injuries in the back line, the Bombers that he has to play on someone. He just can't do what he does normally. And and Will Day as well. He just he just didn't get back to his dominant best. He hasn't got back good. to it yet. I hope he does. Um, yeah. But I think they've seen that Warpool can actually play as a lot more of a inside mid, and they've tried to play him a little bit more outside. Yeah. Will Day, which is a bit a bit annoying because he does get a lot more touches when he was in that midfield. I mean, look, he's still got seventy seven. So I mean, that's not good, but. It's not enough to trade him out. No, no. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take that because he's still got a good Absolutely, score. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what's your trades this so week? So my trades this week, uh, where is it? Yeah. So I got rid of Mick V for the, the um, Melbourne. He just bottomed out in cash now. And I got Harry Sharp. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, because I had a go at him last week because he said get um, Drury from North yeah, Melbourne. Was, yeah, he I, got 25. I got yeah, Sharp because he was like, yeah, he, was only 20, he was only 20k more. And I was like, you did not see him play the week before. He played really well on the wing. Yeah. He was getting some good touches. And in that game, he played really well against Essendon as well. Yeah. And he got 70. So yeah. I was happy with Harry Sharp. And um, also, I couldn't go Jai Clark because if you, um, he played, he came off on as a sub at the three quarter time. He got 36. So I could have went him, but I just, I just don't think he's going to get the game time at Geelong yet. And. So we'll I see would, in the next couple of weeks because yeah. his break even wouldn't be that high. I mean, he'd still be yeah, he's like three hundred. Yeah. It's right, two, he's like still two a still two a. Oh, is he? A, oh, is he a draft? He's a draft. He's a draft yeah. yeah. So uh, and then I finally got rid of McGrath because he's been kicking me in the ass all season. I tried to get rid of him a couple of weeks ago, but I had to re- reverse that one. But I got rid of him this week, and I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> and I got Zach Butters because well, let's be honest, he's dominating at the moment. So we've and, both got the exact same forward line now. Yeah, exact same that. forward yeah. line. Yeah, um, well, I, but I mean that's my best performing position. Yeah. So I, I could I could have went like Bailey Smith, but I just don't trust that yet. I just I don't know. When Trelaw comes back, I think it's just he's yeah. gonna move to half forward again. Yeah, I think so. You know, I just don't know. And so this week, uh, this uh, week, I'm at the moment. I got Golden as my vice. Two hundred fifties in a row, isn't it? Yeah, or something. I think he had to. You just got to give it to him to see how he goes against North Melbourne. But then and, keep rolling, I guess. And I'm mad if you change it to Rarell Gold. Yeah, just I don't know. About it now, cause it is against North Melbourne, but yeah. I think North Melbourne may tag him because North Melbourne have a prone to like those sort of teams. Those lower teams are prone to throwing like a a young kid to a yeah, to a, I don't know. a performing player just to see how they go. Yeah, I don't know. I think we'll see how it goes. It's only yeah. advice. Anyway. It's only advice, and I've put my my captain on uh, Marshall. Like if um. If uh, was it Mason Cox can score a hundred against the Giants, surely um, <laughs> Marshall can. scores one hundred and fifty. Surely, <laughs> pray for that. Knock on wood. But um, yeah, that's my trades this week, and I'm hoping to, to, to scrape up the rankings in a couple of weeks. What are you ranking, Dan? Three thousand one hundred. So, okay. so I'm ranking slowly getting I'll, up I'll there. I'll rank at twelve hundred. I'm gonna so. start. Um, you got to start getting rid of the players for your buy rounds because I think they start around twelve now, don't they? Yeah, there's, there's four rounds this week. There's year. four rounds with it because they want to. I don't know. It's stupid. Why are they doing that? I think because they know. put the pros. Uh, sorry, they're putting four four teams at round uh, for rep for the first round of buys. Then two. Yeah. Then six and six. Yeah, I don't know. Because they did that for when the China game, because the China game, a couple of, like back in 2019. Yeah. Because obviously they had to come back, so they, I understood that, but I don't understand. Why I don't know. Maybe probably extra round, extra round now because of the gather round. They have 24 rounds this year. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It just seems so stupid, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, sure but you, you've got to start... Um, getting them out. Getting, so. getting rid of your buy players that you don't want to have. Because you only you do get the only the top 18 scores. Yeah. But you, you want to have 18 in the team. You want to have more than 18 so you can have you can adjust them and you hopefully you don't get well, a player like them. No, it's the 18. Yeah, it's the 18 best. So if you get yeah. someone who gets 22 yeah, so you want to have a player, they get yeah. kicked out. Yeah, you want to have, I think, at least 20 each round. So then you don't get a player like a, um, a Fergus Green who got six last week. Because play you play, play in your team, team you take six. Like, you don't want to have that. You want to get... You, you want good scores, so... Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's actually um, the end of the episode for episode 11 of the Band Riders podcast. Um, make sure to let us know down below uh, what else we could do with the podcast. I know it's only episode 11, but, you know, I think maybe even also, and I know this is a long time away, maybe tell us what you would like to see maybe in the off-season of the AFL, because I'd still want to, like, do this throughout the off-season of the AFL. It'd be kind of weird to stop a whole yeah. podcast for it. I mean, I'm sure we'd do things like the trade period and stuff, but maybe we could talk about other sports or stuff. We like watching... Premier League soccer, NFL a bit. We're not novices of it like we are the AFL, but 
Maybe give it a good run and <laughs> give it a good go. We forget what positions half the NFL. I don't even like. I like watching the NFL, but I don't know half the positions of it. So that's my yeah. knowledge of it. Well, we can give a crack fancy <laughs> the NFL. We've tried we it. could. I, I I'm not very good at it, but I, yeah. I, I did one year and I don't. I forgot about it after two weeks. So I think I did tipping. We could do tipping for it. Mm. But anyway, um, anyway, if you want to let us know about that, let us know. Um, let us know your favorite Indigenous jumper this year. This week, uh, let us know your favorite Indigenous jumper. Good luck to your team this week, but that's all from us, so we'll catch you all next time.